three. Um, hello and welcome back to uh, two hairy men and an old Mercedes. As, as per usual. As you've probably deducted, this is another vlogumentary in our lineup of engine documentaries. Yes, it is. And eagle-eyed viewers might have noticed that we're doing this chronologically. We started with the M110 for some reason, well, probably because we both love it. Yes. We did triple one, so now it's the turn of the M112, which at some point I thought of combining with the 113, but that would be like a three-hour documentary. It would. And I don't think my GoPro battery is going to do that. No, and no, I don't think someone's going to watch it for three hours. If it was I, a podcast, I yes. think some people would, but not everyone. No. The M112 is a modular engine. It's a V6 version. There was also a V8, and we just discussed off camera another estate. Yes. We are actually in a W203 C240 estate with an M112 engine. Yes. The 112 was the six cylinder version. There are a lot of noisy bikes. It's a nice the day. M what? It's a nice day to be on a motorcycle. I guess. M113 is eight cylinder. Yes. And then. I believe there was something called an M137, which is a V12 version of these engines. Yeah, it's, it's basically just the two V6s that I've been probably. Not entirely sure about that. You can drop us a line in the comments if you like. Right. Um, what puts these, what, what uh, hang on. Yeah, um, yours is fine, that's fine. Cool. Um, interesting features about the M112 is that it's a 90 degree V6 because the M113 is a V8, that's 90 degree, that's yeah. normal. The V12 is also 90, but for a V6, they usually have a tighter bank angle. Uh, with 60 degrees. It's usually 60 or yeah. so. So the M112 is a naturally aspirated petrol engine, 90 degrees. It was the first ever V6 engine by Mercedes-Benz. It was. Yeah, which brings me to another point that I mentioned off camera. Um, it's unconfirmed. I read it somewhere. If someone out there knows that, please confirm or link. Um, I just researched it. I can't find it. Mercedes-Benz did um, Deutsche Touring Car, DT, DTM, yeah. Meisterschaft, ITC. Um, they also did some international runs before the FIA came and ruined everything. Um, they always do that. Yeah, they do. So they that, killed so many. Sorry to interrupt. They killed so many great racing series. Slightly off topic, but there's some really amazing racing series. And the whole point about this engine was that Mercedes-Benz was running the W202, the previous C-Class, or their first C-Class, uh, with a V6 engine that was a 90-degree quad cam based on the M119, the, the older V8. Yeah. Um, naturally aspirated. I think it had throttle bodies, 10,500 RPM. 3.6 liter. 3.6. And my understanding was part of the reason why they built the 112 and the 113 and all of that is because if you race it you have to build yeah homologation rules. homologation so they had to make a v6 engine but of course there's we hit the speed bump yeah the major reason why the m112 existed or exists is efficiency which in, i can actually testify to in all departments mm. it is a bit wider than the m104 straight six that came before it but it is shorter it's lighter, it's an all alloy engine. It's all aluminum or aluminium. Aluminium. Yes, whatever aluminum is. Um, it's got a lower center of gravity and it was simpler. Well, we'll get to that just now. Um, all alloy, block and cylinder heads, single overhead cam, so 12 valves per head. That's three valves per cylinder. And it's got the three valve setup because it's got two spark plugs, twin spark. The other efficiency was fuel consumption. And Which is power delivery with uh, the 722.6, especially the, the five speed automatic gearbox. These engines, these cars were very, very fuel efficient. So, I'm getting a bit hot here. Um, twin spark, sequential fuel injection, naturally aspirated or supercharged. They were all water cooled and longitudinally or north south mounted in the cars. They came in quite a few cars. Quite a few. Although not as prolific as the 113 V8, which we'll do a documentary on because that's my all time favorite engine. Sizes that this engine came in 2.4, 2.6, 2.8, 3.2, and 3.7. Power ranged from 125 to 260 kilowatts. 
and torque between 225 and 450 newton meters. The bore, stroke and compression ratio varied with the sizes and applications. Yeah. That's pretty much normal for every range of engines. Um, most of them had forged steel conrods, one-piece cast camshafts, iron-coated aluminium pistons, a magnesium intake with variable intake runners because it's not a VTEC engine. No. It doesn't have variable valve timing, but they have the intake length is adjustable mm. to give you more low down torque or whatever. Yellow premium. 200 SDI. Nice. Sorry, off topic. Uh, oh, and they have balancer shafts between the banks because a 60, a 60 degree V6 is better balanced than a 90. The 90 has a lot of primary and secondary schwingung, uh, rotational, yeah. counter ro rotational problems. Yeah. And that was supposed to uh, counter that. Now, I've got a list. I went on Wikipedia, which is not always great, but I tried my best and I cross referenced it with Merck's own thing. And of course, the other car that the uh, M112 appeared in, which is. Not a Mercedes Benz product. I saw the San Yong as well. Oh, damn. Was it? No, they, they had the street sixes, did they? No, there was, there was another car that came in. Another car that came in was. 3.2 and 3.2 supercharged. Oh, the Chrysler Crossfire. Ding! <laughs> That's why we're friends. So, <laughs> the supercharged one being the SRT6. And I wore it when, right. when I was in high school. I thought they were really cool looking cars. I still like them. And they are based on an SRK's. Chassis, yes, so they the are terrible cars. No. And I think the Chrysler Crossfire also suffers from Clarksonitis, where Jeremy Clarkson said something and everybody thinks he's a god. And he said it looks like a num dog doing a number two. I'm sorry, half the cars from the 1940s and 50s looked like a dog doing a number two, so I don't I thought I, I love the boat tail style. And I thought the SRT6 with this the slightly raised rear wing and the multi-spoke alloy wheels. I thought they were really cool. Yeah. The only sad thing is they all knackered. If you go and you look for a second-hand one now, whether yes. it's a standard Chrysler Crossfire or a Chrysler Crossfire SRT6, they are tired and they have worked hard. Sorry for hopping on on the Crossfire. The um, that was a coupe or a convertible. Yes. The City Two as well. Did you get an SRT6 convertible? Yes. You did. Both. Coupe Most of them blue purple for some reason. Oh, okay. Right, to run you through the different versions of the engine, the internal codes would be E24, that's the 2.4 litre, which was only available in the early W202 C240 and early W210 E240. That Except engine, in South Africa. We didn't get that. Eh? No, we got... Uh, we got 2.6 right from the start. We got 2.6 from the start. So because him, I've had, sorry, I've had this discussion with him and other people and said there was a 2.4 version and they said no, they were all 2.6s. In SA, yes. In SA, so in Southern Africa. Um, yeah. But we never got the 2.4. If okay. you were to get a 2.4 in South Africa, it either is an import, yes. or you the engine decided to heat itself and you imported yes. the engine from the UK, for example. So what we rather got was the E26, which is the 2.6 litre version, which is which had off. a bigger bore, but this no bigger bore, smaller stroke, something like it. Um, same kilowatts at 125, but. Instead of 225 newton meters, it had 240 newton meters. Slightly higher compression ratio as well. So that's the W203 C240. 2.6 meters. Yep. W210 E240, the later ones, or all of ours. Yeah. The W211 E240. Which I haven't seen, to be honest. No, I have. Um, have you seen the a 211 with that? Engine? 211 pre facelift E240. And they bumped the power up to 130 kilowatts on that. Oh, this is a slightly heavier body, yes. so it does make sense. And then something we didn't get, uh, C209, so a CLK, CLK240. Overseas you'd get that. Mm. We didn't get that here. Um, next one, uh, E28, which is the 2.8 liter. Uh, around 150 kilowatts and 270 newton meters. You that, had that engine? No, I had a C280, a W202. Mine was still one of the last straight sixes. Oh, so you did not have that engine. In fact, course. the facelift 202 C280 had 145 kilowatts. It was detuned for some reason. All the others had 150 kilowatts, which includes the W220 S280 S class. We didn't yeah. get that. We only had um, the 320 now. R129, that's the SL280. Same, we didn't get that. Nope. And, but we did get the W210 E280. 
Yes, yes we did. A few of those. Yeah. Good car. I think it's, I, I think that's a great engine combination for that car. I think it, yeah. yeah. I think the two ten and the two point eight V six is a very very good combination for yes. what it is. I think it works well. Exactly. It won't be as fast as an E four thirty or even no. a five hundred. But for what it is, I think the sweet spot of the 210 is uh, petrol wise probably the 280 or the 320. Yeah, although I am the world's biggest E430 disciple, as you will find out soon. Uh, speaking of E320s, that's the next one, the 3.2 liter. Yep, um, 160 kilowatts, 350 newton meters. That's a nice amount of power to have. W203 C320, yep. W210 and 211, the E class is E320. We see a lot of them in Essen. Yes. South Africa, we see a lot of them. Obviously, all facelifted yeah. when it comes to the 210 um, and the 211 pre facelift. Yes. Um, but we do, I think, on a daily basis, you at some point one will drive past. Yes. Um, S Class, the W220, we had an S320. That's a bit underpowered, but still a lovely, lovely car. Yeah, it, it, it suffers from the same issue as when we did the M110 documentary, which you need to go and watch. Yes, please. Where I had a 280S, I still have my 280S, and I love the engine. It's slightly piddly for an S class body. body, and yes. with the 220 S320 with the 112 engine, it's quite similar issue that just a little bit too. Do you know what I've just realized? Yes, Wikipedia or whoever made the entries they forgot about something. But oh, ML320, yes. They've got the ML320 that had an M112, oh, and I that was that must be quite slow. Slightly on the thirsty and slow side, because we also got the R170 SLK320. That's a nice one. And, that was and then two CLKs: the first CLK320 and the second one. So 208 and 209. Yes. Ah. Uh, then we got the W461 Geländewagen G320, the G wagon. That's fine in the G wagon. They're meant to be slow in general. So talky, yeah. Off roading, off roading you. Sorry, I'm not doing my usual thing here. Um, then we got the W639 Viano 3.0 or Vito 119. So that actually that combination, the Viano Vito combination, meant that this engine went all the way till 2015 because most of them just went from 1998 about 2005 2006 yeah but the vans and the mpvs they went much much further and then the chrysler crossfire from 2004 to 2008 that's the normal crossfire it didn't really say 3.2 or anything it was just called yeah. crossfire because now we get the 32 ml which is the supercharged one oh. so 3.2 exactly the same as the other one but it has one bar of boost we'll get to that now and hence it has 260 kilowatts and 450 newton meters lower compression ratio because it's boosted it's an ihi supercharger with twin teflon coated screws it sounds sexy it does it and, actually does and a garrett intercooler which is under the supercharger in between the v and it's got a heat exchanger in the front bumper that's quite interesting um, that was in the w203 or s203 c32 amg my favorite amg and my dream amg it's the ultimate sleeper. That engine in that car is absolutely perfect because a C55 203, yes, it which has, I love. I think that is a wonderful car. It has more grunt. It is louder, yeah. but it, it it starts becoming the AMGs of the mid 2000s, where a bit Larry. Yeah, and you could see it's an AMG. The nice thing about a C32 AMG was so, I can stop next to you at a traffic light. Only got two pipes, which I also like two exhaust pipes if you aren't a mercedes-benz connoisseur and i stop next to you at the traffic light to the back you'll think it's a normal c-class it's a sleeper it will blow your doors off as well and i got to drive one a friend of mine stefan hello nachbar uh, he had one for a while in winter you should have never sold that car but uh, he let me drive it in winter at very high altitude mm -hmm. with bad fuel and that thing still went sideways on command nice and talky engine because i have I'm willing very, to put nice. my head on the block. I believe a, C2, a C32 AMG yes. could outrun a B7 S4 Quattro Audi. Yeah. And I do believe it would be able to outrun a E46 BMW M3. At altitude? In a straight line. Probably Carlton. because on the day that Stefan sold his one, the guy test driving the car 
lined up next to an S4. I don't think it was an RS4, but he lined up next to an S4 and ate it for breakfast and he, he bought the car right there. I must check with him, get in touch with him if you know what happened. Uh, because then there's another firecracker, the SRK32 AMG. Which, which we both wow. love. Because it's, I have an SRK230 compressor, which we yeah. mentioned in the M Triple One documentary, which you also need to watch. Yes, you need unless to watch you've that too. been, you've come from there to oh, here. Oh, binge, binge watching. Hello and welcome. That's absolutely fine. Hopefully, the 113 is already ready for you. After yeah. This. Um, <laughs> and I love the M Triple One, mm -hmm. but I think an R170 SRK with a supercharged 3.2 liter V6 is a very, very naughty combination, and that car will constantly get you into trouble. Because it got the same power as a C32, but it yes. got less weight. I had the C280 straight six W202. Yeah. And I remember I was pulling out of Stellenbosch past Kayamandi in a northerly direction. And I think it was an old Range Rover or something in front of me. He was dawdling along at 70 k's an hour. It's a hundred zone. And an SLK came shooting up behind me. And I could see the the fog lights and the big yeah. wheels. And I thought, oh, that's probably a, a 32. And what I did. When it was free to pass, I kicked down in my four-speed auto, went into second gear, and I revved that C280 out. And I thought, let's see how long it takes. Oh, and while I was overtaking the Range Rover, he was overtaking me in the hard shoulder. Sure. And by the time I pulled back into my lane or whatever, at 140, 150 redlining third gear almost, he was over the horizon. Boop, gone. That SLK32 is a fast little car by our standards. By our standards, yes. I think it's a great combination. I think it's, it's, um, it's the sweet spot. I've always wanted one because at the moment they are dirt cheap. But our mechanic friend Robert has told me that they suffer from a control unit failure. I believe it's the ABS ESP. Yeah. Those units are not available anymore. They are only and, specific. And you can gamble on a second-hand one, and they are specific to that car. Is that correct? Yes. So you can't take even a Mercedes-Benz SLK 320 R170, same, same engine, one. same gearbox Not combination, the same unit, unsupercharged, but everything else is the same. Yeah. You can't use the same unit at all. So there's your first downside, but uh, I guess that's more car-specific. Yeah, that's car-specific. Because we are done with all the. No, we're not. There was one more version, which I only learned about a few years ago. Mm -hmm. Did you know they made a 3.7 liter version of the M112? It's the biggest version they made. To be honest, I actually did not know that. Yeah, it's 3,724 3, cc's, uh, almost 90 mil bore by 84 mil stroke, 180 kilowatt ish. Not bad. 450 newton. No, that's, that's wrong. Oh, right. No, that's wrong. Oh, all right. I think that is a printing error on my side. Hopefully, we'll put some sort of graph here or there or between us. And we can or see between them. us, isn't it? Okay, so, right. the W163 ML350. First generation or second generation? First gen facelift. Ah, yes. ML350 was a 3.7 liter M112 with 173 kilowatts. And then all the rest had 180 kilowatts, which is the W220 S350. That's also a facelift. Yeah. The R230 SL350, which was the early one, because the facelift got the 272 engine. Yes. Oh, by the way, the predecessor of this engine is the M104 straight six, and the successor is the M272 quad cam V6. And the very last car to use this engine or on our list is the W639 V350. So a Vito Viano van MPV. V350 is actually like a fancy one. I think it's a good engine. Actually, a good engine drives for yeah. The Mercedes wins Vito Viano. However, before we get to the chocolate bit, let's get to the sour parts. Problems with an M112 engine. First of all, WTF is up with the 240 motors, or in our case, 260. He was the first one to tell me. A 240 is not the best idea. No. I've also heard of them grenading. But much like a 113, there are two scenarios where you can blow up an M112, especially a 240. It's very early on in its life, which is now gone obviously. Yeah, or in this one's case, definitely. After heavy abuse and neglect, they will grenade. Yeah, and they also, unfortunately, they do have, not all of them. Um, I've always told people it's very much a 50 50. 
from personal experience. Yes. Obviously, it can. The, the, whether if someone has gone and been bored and do the statistics, obviously it might not be 50. You'll either get a 2.6 liter V6 240, yeah. and it will do 800,000 kilometers. Yes. And I can testify. They I can, have seen one with 800,000. They can do kilometers. half a million kilometers or more uh, if or you more. look after them. If you look after them, we'll get and they will run forever. But yes. then you have ones that after 150,000 kilometers, they just they already start deciding to eat head gaskets. And the problem is, this is a V6. If the head gasket goes on one bank, you have to replace both banks. You can't just do the one side, you have to do both. So that becomes a very, very expensive little trip. Hashtag V6 life. Um, so, with the, the 2.6, Grenading, overheating, head gaskets. Uh, uh, problems, yes. Uh, it's it's a twin spark engine, which means there are twelve, spark usually plugs. quite expensive spark yes, plugs. Yes, platinum. And if you save on those, you're going to save on other things, and then the motor is going to start degrading. Um, the early ones can have a broken crankshaft, pulley, or harmonic balancer. But from my research, also there were some American sites, very very knowledgeable people out there they said it was the very early ones and by a later stage by here early 2000s definitely mid 2000s it was sorted, sorted out, out. Um, the crankshaft position sensor that is an m112 and 113 problem yep. the crank sensor just tells the electronics and everything how fast the engine is turning and if that starts going which it will or it can it's very likely to go um, the motor just shuts down it goes into safety mode and you can't turn it anymore however I learned that there are some signs on some of them it begins with hot start problems so if your car doesn't want to start while it's hot but it starts perfectly when it's cold that might be the crankshaft position sensor then you also said mayonnaise in the cylinder heads which is when two things mix water and oil yes however i've also learned it's not always the head gaskets in some of them there are two o-rings between the bank v or the, or the banks and the timing gear or the timing gear housing i'm a bit out of my depth there so that's near the front of the motor yeah there's some seals that can go but of course if you find slushy beautiful brown coffee milkshake in your usually not a good thing. it's usually not a good thing oil leaks yes yes they, they they leak from the valve covers the oil cooler the cam plugs the oil pan and the oil filter housing yes they don't always do that all the time from everywhere but those are the places you should look when you're servicing one or consider buying and one. And it is worth mentioning that the oil cooler when it goes faulty it can also result in sort of a mushy milkshake but and that will be more likely in the reservoir for the coolant not so much in the engine yeah. oil um, but luckily it's still a worrisome thing but it's not an expensive thing Luckily, the oil coolers aren't stupidly expensive. The labor is a bit terrible because you have yep. to sort of dig for it, but the part itself yes. um, is not terrible. And sometimes you can actually repair the oil cooler. Something along a similar vein uh, or a similar line: the engine breather, so the crankcase ventilation. Those pipes get blocked or the exit, whatever. Yeah. Not expensive, but labor intensive. Yeah, because once again, they 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 are on fiddly hidden areas, yeah. which isn't great. And then something I hadn't heard before. Uh, the coil packs, of which it has six, can malfunction due to oxidation. I haven't really heard of that. I'm going to be honest, I've not actually gone across that. No, okay, I, so will, I will take whoever... I'll throw that in there, but yeah. th that's highly unlikely. If whoever you find a car that. with that, that not, you might want to walk away. Um, the 32 en engines, the AMGs, can have intercooler pump failure. And that is a big problem because then the motor itself overheats. So and the pump dies. Yeah. So uh, you definitely want to keep an eye on that or have it checked every now and then. Something that we've experienced on an E430, and it is possible with these as well, the valve stem seals are damaged due to neglect or abuse. Yeah. And in order to replace them or repair them, you have to put, take the motor apart. It might also be rings, but usually there's valve stem seals when the car smokes blue. And to do that costs more than to buy a second-hand motor because of the labor, right? Yeah. yeah. It's, 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 it's very weird. The engine in itself for early 2000s is quite a simplistic engine. Yes. But to do the work 
to get to the simplistic part can takes be a lot of digging and difficult. Um, which brings us to the last negative. Apparently, it's got blocked EGR valves, so that's exhaust gas recirculation, which um, can also lead to bad fuel pump return valve. I don't think those are related. Or a, a bad fuel. Do not yeah. put substandard fuel in. I know that's difficult in some, in some parts of the world, especially we live in Southern South Africa. Africa. We don't have nice petrol because it can clog the injectors. No, that's why. Oh. That's why. Even if you live in a much more advanced country that has clean petrol, yes. I am still a fan of doing injector cleaner in the tank every five thousand kilometers. Okay. All my cars, every five thousand kilometers, yes. I do injector cleaner. Every time I purchase a Mercedes Benz to resell, like yeah. this one, you the put foot, I put injector cleaner. Now, we've hated enough on this poor thing, this good engine, this donkey engine, this. Master of no, uh, jack of all trades, master of none. That's what they also say about the. Actually, we've said that about just about but, every engine. <laughs> but <laughs> let's get to as the saying also goes, rather master of none than the master of one. Of one. So positives, if well maintained, it's a very reliable engine and can do high mileage. Yes. Which also true. means if you can somehow find one that's decent, pay good money for the best one you can because it makes a excellent commuter and high-speed cruiser so if you do mileage they are very efficient they're quiet they sound half decent they can't do revs or anything but it's not supposed to do that it's not a race car um, unless obviously the C-Class DTM but that was a different story and coming back to that Mercedes needed to update their, their engines not just for the DTM but they also needed better packaging tighter yeah. um, Euro 4 emission norms better fuel consumption and the M112 slash 3 did all of that so they perfectly did the job they were meant to do um, the next one it's an all alloy engine so it's very lightweight which is also more fuel efficient all of them are more fuel efficient than the ones before them. I can actually so testify the to that so yeah. this one that I've bought so this is a 2003 Mercedes-Benz C240 Elegance Estate, Estate with a dog net <laughs> Do you know how many people purchase these cars and that's the first thing they take out and then when you buy it, oh, we can't oh, remember they, what. They throw it away. Yeah. They don't do that. Don't. Also, the spare key, don't chuck it into the ocean. Oh, like give this it, one. Or give it to your children. No, this one, this one, when I ask for a spare key. Yeah. Um, Why do people do that? For example, this engine. Oh, oh, sorry. Also, don't keep it in the user manual so that someone breaks the window, the spare key is in the car. Yeah. Not a good idea. Um, <laughs> so this one has 300,000 kilometers. It drives really, really well. It's been it well maintained. Um, in nice condition. Very, very nice condition. And what I, what surprised me, because I've always been slightly afraid of the 2.6, um, because of all the nightmare stories. Two weeks ago, we went camping um, just outside of Worcester. So for those that need reference from where I live to where we went to go camp, it's about 100 kilometers. Not too about bad. About 60 miles. Yep. About 60 miles. But we had to do a bit of a round trip. You took a this friend, car. Yeah, I took this car to go camping. Um, but a friend of mine lived in Stellenbosch, so we had to do a slight detour. So a 100 kilometer trip turned into about a 130 kilometer trip. Okay. Not the end of the world. But now take into account, it was my wife and myself, all our camping equipment, including my friend that comes in at a good six foot three, and all of his camping equipment. Um, I only saw my rear view mirror on the Sunday on our way home when I dropped him off in Stellenbosch, but that yes. was how heavy laden the car was. At an average of 100, with very much a very fully loaded car, I got 10.5 kilometers to a litre. Which is for a car this size with such an engine, with all the weight, everything. I was highly extremely, respectful. extremely impressed. They can do not just mileage, but they they can cruise beautifully around town, or if you hammer them, you know, they're just going to eat fuel. But they can be very, very yeah. Fuel if, I, if I drive it the way I'm doing now, we when I bought the car, I bought it on Poles. So for those that need reference, Poles about give or take about 70, 80 kilometers from where I live. For um, and it's mostly highway um, back to where I live yes. and I averaged at 120 fifth gear 
I did about 12.5 kilometers to a liter in a V6 station wagon. It's really, 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 really good. Yeah, you guys okay there? Yes, you are. Let's go down, down a bit more. Um, which brings us to the next good point, and I think we've mentioned it. Overall, it's a very simple design. It's got simple cylinder heads. Ah, some road maintenance. Afternoon. Um, it's got simple heads, very simple intake system, no turbos. Okay, you do get a supercharged version. Yeah. Um, but I still take a supercharger over no, the turbocharger. No, it is, it is multi-point fuel injection, I think it is. Yeah. Yes, but it is. comparably simple engine and fairly easy to work on with less to go wrong. The cars themselves as well. Most of these vehicles, the C-Class, the E-Class, optional air suspension on some e -class, but most of them had no turbos, no double clutches, no air suspension, and we like that. It's simple and easy. It also, means it could go on forever. And the nice thing is the previous, they had previous generation gearboxes. What I mean by that is the W202s I have, has yes. a 7.22, has a 722.6 gearbox. Yes. This also has a 722.6 gearbox. Yes. So, yes, it was a new, and in, in the case it's of the, the C-Class, for example. Auto. Yeah. yeah. So in the case of the C-Class, and this one, you've got a newer design, it's a Mercedes-Benz C-Class for the new millennium, but it still had a lot of tried and trusted parts, yeah. like the gearbox from the previous generation exactly. C-Class. Right. Welcome back. We stopped for beauty shots. Which you'll see later. Or during the video, actually, we stopped because the camera overheated. Um, we were almost Not the done. car, but the camera. <laughs> the car is absolutely fine, although it doesn't have a temperature gauge. You have no. to call it up in the in the yeah. Display. You have to go through the um, yes. Um, As a buyer's guide, can only advise you get the one with the best service record. Okay. For example, you, yeah. So this one, yeah. for example, I purchased. Yes, to refurb and resell. But one of the reasons the I mileage? bought. 300,000 kilometers so almost 200,000 miles but it has a full service history it's one of the reasons why I yes. considered getting it because yeah. I know this car has been maintained from 2003 until 2023 there's 20 years of records yes. on this car and that's what you want if you can live without certain specs or whatever if you want one to last you forever get the best one you can yeah that's been looked after and that's just about it because now um, we are going to mention our favorite M112 engine car. I was, I was going to say let's not do the least favorite because someone got upset in our triple one engine video because I said E220 I think and the guy was like what? E220 is the best car I've ever had. I didn't mean it's a bad car, it's just my least favorite so I was going to ignore that but you said we should do that. As I said it is the internet. Everybody's going to get upset. Everyone's somewhere. going to be upset. Oh, no, I get offended. Oh um, yes, uh, 320, yes. free facelift, M112, nice car. Um, so let's start with your least favorite M112 powered car. I'm just going to quickly park here yeah, in the in shade, shade because the African one. sun is no joke. Yeah. What's your least favorite? My least favorite? Mm, I need to actually give that a good sink now. I'm going to be honest, I think it would be... W203 C240 The one we're in <laughs> The only thing that works is this is in the state uh, which, yeah, which, It, nice it gets extra brownie points I love station wagons But a normal It would be, it would be nicer as a 320 What? Oh. A 280 Did they make the 280 in the 203? I don't think they did No they did not They did not But I've, oh. ne but I've never seen a 320 estate though I have Overseas, probably. But not here. Um, my least favorite, not that it's a terrible car, but my least favorite would be ML320. Pre-facelift ML320. Leaves me a bit cold. Although we have a pre-facelift ML, so. Like I said, not a terrible car, just this, this is one that... You said S320 is also for you. On the one hand... I changed from the S320 because yes. as with I my like 280 S3. yeah as with my mm. with my 280 SE with the M110 engine yes I do feel in an S class the 112 is too underpowered a bit pup we would say in but South Africa yes when it comes this is now more model specific than engine I have a massive fear 
for W140 and upwards S classes with air suspension. And the S320 did not have air suspension. So it uh, might be piddly, but my long-term maintenance on it will be a lot more affordable. Yes. Which so, now brings us to your favorite M112 engine vehicle. C32 AMG. <laughs> there, there's, it's, 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 it's my dream AMG. So I'm going to cheat and pick a couple of them. Because I've just decided C32 AMG is not a bad one. SLK I'm scared of because of the control unit. C32 AMG station wagon. I am actively looking for one. Um, another thing I'm actively looking for, uh, but we'd have to get it overseas because I don't think we got any, SLK 320 manual. I think that as a weekend car, not as a daily commuter because it can be a bit notchy, but I believe it's the more modern six-speed already. A tiny V6 manual roadster which I guess you could also buy a Crossfire if you like that look. Crossfire came in manual. Same and the engine. SRT6 came in manual as well. No. Only that, auto. That was auto. No, they used that 722.6. They couldn't put a manual in there. That's a shame though. I think that car would be a lot That would be a lot of manual fun. Gearbox. And then I love a CLK. So if I had no other choice because I'm a V8 man, I don't mind a V6 208 or 209 CLK. So I'm picking a few of them. I can agree with the 208. I've, I think, I think when CLK it comes to when it comes to CLKs, I think the 320 is a sweet spot. Good car. Because you've got closer to the fuel consumption of your 111, your mm -hmm. M111 powered yes. ones, which I love. We all know yes. this if you don't go watch the other documentary. Um, but it's not too much down on power in comparison to the V8s. Yeah, the 430s. Okay, and the 50, 500s. My favorite car ever. But we'll get to that. In the next video. Also, spoiler alert, I'm doing a CLK video. I will. On both of them. Do you know what I love about the first CLK? It has basically all the parts that are on my C-Class and it's on the same chassis. It was never made as a diesel. <laughs> Sorry, off topic. Um, M112, I think we mentioned everything. Anything yeah, think, else from your side? No, I think, in, it? general, it's a, I think in general it's a good engine. Um, I think for the purpose that it served, um, I did it very, very well. I think, yes. I think it's fair Efficiency. to say, yeah, I think it's fair to say that the M112, in many regards, um, did what the M111 did for Mercedes-Benz. It was lighter, it was more econom economical, mm. it was more efficient. Didn't um, cause waves or stir, but it did what it had to, and it gave birth to my all-time favorite engine, the 113. With the engine that's my least favorite, even the least favorite engine still was, car. was still able to impress yep. me. Yep. And I think from a very subjective point of view, I think that's a massive positive. Yes. And if you haven't noticed yet, we will keep going. 113 is after that. 114, 116, 117. Yes, those two. Mm. And then 119. And when we get to the 120, we're jumping back to 100 because there are a few engines back there that I like. So thank you so much for watching. Please let us know what you think. Give us your suggestions. If we got anything wrong, we're just human. If we offended you, sorry, but tell us why. Yeah, pretty and much. And I hope you enjoyed it. See you on the next one. All right. Thanks for watching. Bye.